Extruding geometry is one of the more basic and common 3D modeling tools in Blender. It may seem simple, but there's a little more to extruding than one might think. I'll cover everything you need to know, including five tips you may not know for extruding a mesh in Blender. Extruding is taking a portion of the mesh and extending, aka extruding, in a certain direction. We do this in edit mode, so if you're in object mode, press tab to get into edit mode. We can extrude vertices, edges, or faces. Whether in vertex, edge, or face select mode, we select a portion of the mesh and we use the keyboard shortcut E to extrude. Technically, this is two separate motions called extrude and move, because after we press E to extrude, we drag our cursor around to move the extruded section. We left click to lock the action into place. So here's what it looks like with a vertex. E to extrude, drag, left click to lock. And here's what it looks like with an edge. E to extrude, drag, left click to lock. With vertices and edges, they are not by default stuck to extruding in a certain direction. After we press E to extrude, we can move our cursor around and somewhat control which direction the segments go. But here's what it looks like with a face selected. We press E and by default the face extrudes along its normal orientation, which for beginners means it extrudes in the direction it already faces. But this can be changed in a few different ways I'll cover in just a second. Notice the extrusion can be positive, meaning it goes outward, or negative, meaning it extrudes inward toward the mesh. This will be important shortly. Tip number one, the direction of the extrude. After we press E to extrude the selected geometry, but before we left click to confirm the action, we can press X, Y, or Z to lock the movement to any of the three global axes. So E to extrude, then when we press X, it's locked to the X axis. We can press Y to change to the Y axis and Z to align to the Z axis in our scene. Then we left click to release. Tip number two is the distance of the extrude. We can tell Blender to extrude the selected mesh a certain distance. We can select this face, although it could be done with edges and vertices too, and then press E to extrude. Then before we click to confirm, we can type in a numerical value. For example, I'll type in the number one after I press E. It extrudes one unit of whichever units we have set up in our scene properties panel. The scene properties panel, by the way, is right over here and in it we can change the units of measurement our scene uses, like meters, kilometers, or for me, I will choose feet. So back to this example. I pressed E and then one, and it moves one foot. It now won't let us move it because this is intended to be very precise with our measurements. I still have to left click to confirm the extrude operation though. We can extrude again and this time press two to extrude two feet, left click to confirm. E to extrude then three for three feet, or the units of your choice, and then left click to confirm. You get the point. We can also type in numerical distances with a decimal point. For example, E and then 3.65 to extrude that many units. Or we can press E and then type a negative number like negative one, and then it will extrude in the negative direction by that many units. The direction and distance can be combined. For example, here I'll press E to extrude and then X two. This has extruded the mesh along the X axis by two units. Pressing E and then two and then X would also do the same thing. The direction and distance are interchangeable. By the way, if you made it this far, giving the video a like is hugely appreciated. It helps me out with YouTube, so a big thanks in advance. Tip number three is extruding multiple faces. Let's see what happens when we select multiple faces and extrude. If the faces are adjacent, they will all extrude and move together. There's no unnecessary geometry created here in between the extruded faces. If we instead extruded the two faces separately, two overlapping faces would be created between the extruded mesh, and that's not ideal. So now let's see what happens when we select non-adjacent faces and extrude them together. In this case here, they extrude, but all in a single direction. That may or may not be what we want. This direction is decided by the transform pivot point, which is up at the top of the 3D viewport. Here it's set to median point. So the point these faces are extruding away from is the average of all the origin points. Let's see what happens when we change this to individual origins. The faces instead extrude in their own normal directions based off their individual origin points. So if they're not extending in the direction you want, try changing the pivot point up here. Tip number four is the operator panel. Whenever we complete the extrude and move action, which is technically called an operation in Blender, this little box appears in the bottom left corner of the 3D viewport. It's called the operator panel, and it appears after most operations in Blender. 
When we click the arrow to expand the operator panel, we get a menu of settings for the operation that we just completed. That means the very last operation that Blender did. In this case, it was the extrude and move. We can adjust the final location of the extruded geometry along all three axes. We can, after the fact, change the orientation of the operation. That's a fancy technical name for the direction I covered earlier. There are actually several different orientations to choose from here. For example, changing to view will make the extruded face move directly toward the current viewport view. That might come in handy at some point. We can turn on proportional editing for this operation. This would pull the geometry proportionally along with the extrusion, as if we had proportional editing turned on before we did this. We can adjust the fall off and size of the proportional editing, all of this after the fact. Anyway, there are a lot of things we can adjust on the extrusions after the fact in the operator panel. Once we do another action in Blender though, like extrude another part of the mesh, we can't access the panel anymore. So the ability to make these changes are only temporarily available until we use another operation. And tip five is click extrude. The fifth tip may be the coolest. There's an entire other way to extrude in Blender besides the shortcut E, and it's called click extrude. It works like this. Select a part of the mesh. This can be in vertex, edge, or face select mode. Then press Control and right click somewhere in the 3D viewport. The selected mesh is extruded to wherever we click. Then we can just keep doing this however we want and quickly create something. How the click extrude works is dependent on our view and the depth is determined by the current location of the 3D cursor. You may wanna do this in orthographic view. So extruding is a pretty basic operation, but as you can see, there are a few things besides just knowing the shortcut. My name is Brandon. Learn more about Blender at my website, brandonsdrawings.com and have a look around my channel. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thanks for watching and stay creative.